Joining me now are leading experts on both sides of this debate. Don Underag is the author of the Environmental Working Group's report that we just showed you, and Dr. Scott Hurd is a food safety and public health consultant who was previously appointed Deputy Undersecretary for Food Safety. Thank you both for being here. And since this is a debate, I am officially the moderator. But no, I, I do want to talk about this because it's very important. I'm going to start with you, Dr. Hurd, because it's estimated about 80% of antibiotics used in this country are actually given to animals, but you say that that is a bit mis misrepresented. Well, what's misrepresented is whether it's really a concern. If you think about how large is a steer, a thousand pound steer is obviously going to need more medicine than a human. And given also the fact that we, take, we harvest about nine billion animals per year, animals need antibiotics to keep them healthy, to fight disease, because that's an important part of our food safety as well. It's true that a cow is larger than a child, but bacteria really don't care because some 30 million pounds of antibiotics are sold for use in animals each year, and that represents millions of opportunities for breeding the next superbug. Also, it's important to know that um, once antibiotics develop resistant to one type, of anti uh, one type of antibiotic, they also often become resistant to an entire class. So this is an important issue. When you say that antibiotics, it's sort of a necessary thing, you don't think that when we talk about antibiotic resistance, that's really playing a role here when it comes to Antibiotic to resistance beef? is an important concern. Okay. Um, veterinarians are involved. We test the bacteria on the farm before we prescribe an antibiotic so we know it's going to work. And you mentioned in your segue that overuse is the concern. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, overuse is the concern. That's why we train our veterinarians and we, the vets train the farmers to use the products when and where you need them. We don't just pour antibiotics willy-nilly on the feed and feed it a steady diet, diet of antibiotics like, like some people imagine. So that doesn't happen because no, a lot no, of, no. I mean, and I'm gonna ask you, Don, about that because you're saying they're used more than that. Yeah, I mean, they're used for treatment, but they're also used for prevention and control and growth promotion and feed efficiency, basically getting the animal to slaughter faster. And look, you, you know as a doctor, we're asking sick kids who have ear infections to wait a couple of days to make sure they really need an antibiotic because we don't want to use unnecessary antibiotics unnecessarily. But on the farm, most people are surprised to learn that they'll give antibiotics with even without a prescription or limited veterinary oversight to healthy animals. And all we're saying is, the medical authorities agree, American Medical Association, American Academy of Pediatrics, World Health Organization, among others, that unnecessary use of antibiotics on the farm is part of the problem, and all we're saying is doctors and patients are part of the solution, and so are our meat producers. If you actually look at the data, which is published by FDA, only about 10 to 12 percent of all antibiotics used in livestock are, for, are under the heading of what they call growth promotion. And actually, that use will soon disappear. FDA. So we, we can agree that that, should, that needs to end, That's right? really not necessary. Okay. If it's simply for economic purposes, it's a tool that shouldn't be used. We agree with that, no problem. So does it, is there any, because don't get into this debate, because I'm, I'm sensing a little bit of middle ground here, because as a physician, I can't tell you how concerned I am about antibiotic resistance. I can't tell you how frustrated I am with a, a medical establishment and, and patient population that we demand more and more of these things. Right. Mm -hmm. And it really is going to end up, at some point, creating even more problems than we have right now. So to bridge this gap, how can we get to a place where, OK, yes, if, if an animal has pneumonia, which is bacterial, they need antibiotics, just like a human would. But it seems like we're further apart than well, I think we agree that we definitely, the unnecessary use, that's in that 12% or whatever the number is, because we don't really have good numbers, because frankly, industry lobbies against getting that number so we can really get to the science of it and make targeted changes to our policies to support it. And the guidance that um, Dr. Hurd is talking about is a voluntary guidance by the FDA. And we say, you know, voluntary isn't enough. We need to move, we need to be stronger on this issue because it's the public health, it's a public health crisis, impending public health crisis.